Hi, I'm Councilwoman Deborah Stark, and this is the Stark Report. Joining us on today's show is Police Chief Jerry Williams. Chief Williams, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman, so much for having me. Sure. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you earned your way to be to the position of uh, Phoenix Police Chief? I, I know you're from here originally. So, uh, native Phoenician, grew up uh, primarily in West Phoenix. Um, was really looking for an opportunity for pay equity and way to give back to the community. So uh, the police department was kind of the, the natural go-to for me, never thinking back in the day that I'd be police chief one day. <laughs> uh, I just wanted a job that no day was the same, that I could help people. Um, and fortunately for me, the police department did that for me. So rose through the ranks, um, became an assistant chief and decided to spread my wings just a little bit. So I went to Oxnard, California to be the chief there for about five and a half years and the opportunity presented itself to be the police chief uh, of my hometown. So it was really nice to come back, back home and have the opportunity to come back home. So been here for a year and a lot of stuff going on, great community connections, um, and have really gotten to know you and your staff uh, and the folks in your district and very so much appreciate your support. Yeah, no, we're happy to have you. Now, what high school did you go to? Oh, go Maryville, Maryville oh, Mary Panthers. All right, I thought <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah. I go thought Maryville. so. Exactly. That's pretty exciting. It's a great place to grow up. Yes. And, you know, I, I moved here in the 70s, but my husband was born and raised here, my kids. So they're, uh, they went to North Canyon. So we may not have been around when you were in high school. No, but technically you're kind of a native-ish yeah. or so. Yeah. Yes, there you yeah. go. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of your goals for the department. Right. So uh, we're really looking at this year, really impacting crime suppression. So um, quality of life issues are, are things that we're very concerned about. And I know folks in your district are concerned about the same thing. Uh, the homeless problem, our contact with persons with mental illness, um, thefts and other crimes we're really working on, focusing on this year. But we still wanna increase our presence at our community engagement. So there's that delicate balance of really impacting crime while at the same time empowering the community, engaging the community, and really helping them be our extra eyes and ears out there. Um, fortunately for us, council approved our police assistance too, so we're yeah. augmenting our patrol fleet. So the police assistants are gonna be the civilian folks who don't carry guns, but they'll take accident reports, they'll take theft reports, they'll take um, possibly burglary reports. You come home and your garage has been broken into, they'll take those type of reports. If you think in context though, they're gonna take 20,000 calls for service out of the million calls we take every year um, off the backs of patrol. So we're really excited about that opportunity um, and thanks so much to you and council for voting for that. Yeah, I appreciate everything you've done, especially along the light rail. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on in the light rail area? So, so light rail has been this amazing opportunity to create the dynamics that other big cities have, right? Mm -hmm. um, mass transit and the ability and the opportunity to get places without having to be right. tied to a vehicle. What we found though is there have been some challenges, crime challenges along light rail. So we've augmented um, the people that we have on light rail to include extra and additional transit officers if you go down the platforms and we invite our community members to do that, and we invite mayor and council to do that, you'll see extra security guards on the platforms. You'll see police officers engaging. Um, so uh, earlier this year, we added an, an additional four and four or eight people um, to address peak hours during the, the day just to increase our presence there, which is in tune, we're hoping is going to decrease some of the criminal behavior that's happening. One of the other great programs in your department is the Block Watch program. I, I personally love it. <laughs> we have a Block Watch in my neighborhood. Um, the community action officers are great. Can you talk a little bit about that program? So, great, great program. And, and, and I do want to shout out because I don't know how many of your constituents are looking. When I go to community meetings, I see you at every community meeting. And that, that's a huge shout out to um, your commitment to your district. So the Block Watch program is designed to educate and empower and engage community members in being aware of and contacting us uh, on crime issues. When I speak at community meetings, I talk all the time about how you know your neighborhood better than I know your neighborhood. I know my neighborhood better than you know it. So we want community members to feel empowered um, to be able to contact law enforcement if they see something suspicious, something that just do isn't right, something that's different. And our community action officers are that direct liaison to our community members. So I, you're quite aware that at the beginning of my tenure, I had to move people from specialty to patrol. We heard the concerns that you and other members of the community um, talked about having that liaison. So we didn't touch the community action officers because they're really the, 
heart and soul of that connection point between the community members and crime problems. So our community members can contact that one person in the precinct or in the area, and then that one person can direct resources and get people the information, answers, responses that they need. It's tremendously successful, and to be honest, I couldn't run a police department without them. I think it's a great program. One of the things I hear from constituents, we have two precincts in District 3, Desert Horizon and Black Mountain, and they're big, big precincts. Yeah. And often constituents will say, how can they help us? It's so big. How, how do you patrol when you have such a big precinct? So, so oftentimes, and great question, uh, oftentimes it's generated by calls for service. So priority calls, we have priority ones, which are egregious calls, crimes against person to priority threes, which may be a burglar in your home and you don't have any suspect information. So our folks are primarily going call to call. That's why we need block watches. Mm -hmm. That's why we need people to be engaged in neighborhoods because there's no way for us to be out there. Um, I do want to give a shameless plug, if I may, too, to our virtual block watch program. Oh, yeah, please. So we're trying to engage people who have camera systems. Most of us have cameras at our, at our homes to just log on to our website and register your camera system. And what that does is if there is a crime, if there is a series or trend, we're able to obtain the footage that you have to be able to resolve issues and crimes. And to be honest, it was one of the ways that we were able to resolve the serial shooter series right. was by engaging community members who had camera systems in their neighborhood. So please join the virtual block watch program. Um, we can get you more information, but log on to the Phoenix Police website um, and we can get you all that information because it's critically important for us to have connection points in the city. Speaking of cameras, what about body cameras for oh, our great officers? <laughs> great one. Uh, so, so we went from this past year, we had 150 out in patrol. We've increased that to 300. So we have 150 out in patrol and that includes our crisis intervention team squad. So we have two squads of folks who deal primarily with diffusing and resolving situations with persons who may ha be having mental health issues or in crisis. So those officers were systems. And then not only did we have the body-worn cameras just in Maryville Precinct, we now have them in each of the seven precincts. Um, not as many a, a, as I want. I, I want to be able to outfit all of patrol with body-worn cameras. So we're going through another request for a proposal process to try to obtain the best camera system possible, not just for the officers, but for the community members. Um, and, and people may have this misnomer about body-worn cameras. Um, they are a tool much like the other tools that we have on our, on our belts, um, it may not show you the beginning or the end, it's going to show you what the officer sees at the time, but it's a powerful tool to help the police officer show what happens in a scene or scenario, and then for community members to really feel as though we're legitimate and transparent, um, because that's what we want to be to our public. So one of the biggest issues right now for the police department is hiring police officers. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing? Great, great question. So um, two weeks ago, week, week or so ago, we had this huge career fair. First time we've ever done this. Um, we're not just looking for police officers uh, because we weren't able to hire a number of years ago because of budget constraints. Those constraints are no longer there. So we need hundreds of officers and people to apply. Um, and, and I say this all the time, we're not looking for perfect people. If we were looking for perfect people, I definitely wouldn't be sitting here in the chair today. <laughs> um, but we are looking for people who have a heart and soul and passion to serve. Uh, we're looking for people who want to make a difference in their community, um, and we're looking for heroes. So it, is a hero a police officer? Is a hero a communications officer? Is a hero a records person? Is the hero a police assistant? We're looking for everyone and anyone, um, and we're encouraging community members to apply or you know, Councilman, what you want to see in a police officer. You, you know what kind of personality you want to see in a police assistant. We're asking all of our community members to send us folks because we're looking to hire, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's not often that a police chief can say that I'm looking to hire hundreds of people and have right. the budget to be able to do that, and we're very blessed and fortunate to have that now. Well, you certainly have a tough job. I mean, it's still scary to be a police officer, but I think it's rewarding, right? It, it's, I, I wouldn't change a day, a moment, a challenge, a crazy hair day, uh, you, you name it. The, the reward that you get when you know that you're making a difference for the betterment of mankind um, is one of the reasons why we sign up to do what we do. Uh, my next door neighbor is a retired NYPD. And he told me one day, I swear to this, he told me one day, he goes, I'll never say this publicly, but the Phoenix Police Department is the most professional yes. department, police department in the country. Okay. 
and I just kind of smiled and said, I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he said he wasn't going to tell yeah. anyone. So we, we, we really pride ourselves on professionalism. Are we perfect? No. Are we looking at always figuring out ways to do things better and, and set the bar really high? Absolutely. And I know for a fact that men and, men and women who wear the, the same patch and badge that I wear are extremely proud, not just of our city, but the representation of law enforcement in general. So what other goals might you have for the department? So that, that's always a great question. And moving forward, we really have to have a focus on what we're doing. So um, there are five focus areas. Uh, crime prevention and um, suppression. So that's what police departments are supposed to be right. doing. Our community engagement and outreach, our hiring, training and retention, employee well-being. Um, and then the last piece I think we've really done a really good job about this year is increasing our legitimacy, is really getting out. Right. Do we say what we do? Do we do what we say all the time? So um, when we talk about crime suppression and prevention, that's everything from arresting bad guys, to virtual block watch, to getting involved in block watch, to really making an impact on the quality of life issues. So we're talking homeless issues, mental health issues, you name it, in the community. Um, when we talk about community engagement, and we talked about it previously, our whole block watch program and the fact that when, especially in your district, now that I think about it, uh, when I go out, you have tremendous outpour of people who want information. Right. They want tangibles. Lena, give me something to take away, Chief Williams or the community action officer, so that's really good. Um, our retention, training, and hiring gangbusters and trying to get people right. hired from police officers to communications operators to police assistants, you name it, we're trying to do it. But we're also able to train too, so I'm really excited about that piece. So when the budget shrinks, one of the things that we do is we scale back training, mm -hmm. but we have to re ramp up training just to make sure our officers are getting the training that they need to do the job with all the changes that are going on in society and equipment. Right. and body-worn cameras and, and you name it. Um, they're really going through that training cycle, so my employees are excited. Um, we actually have a module going on, and so that's a 40-hour block of instruction that all officers have to go through. And if you think in context of, you know, a couple thousand officers having to go through this, it's a big, big project, but we're excited about it. Um, our employee well-being piece, we're really working on too. Uh, I talk about this all the time when, we, when I go to community meetings. You do want an officer who's happy, healthy, right mentally, spiritually, right. emotionally, um, and we have a great employee assistance unit who is there for not just our officers, because people sometimes forget about the communications operators who are taking the calls that are coming in, and they have to be the calm voice of reason when things are going badly for the officers on the street, so we have that unit for them. Um, and then the last piece I talked about is that increased legitimacy, um, both internally and externally. So you know this as a council person, you're answering and engaging with your constituents. I have to answer and engage with my employees too, because right. they really have to feel confident in the boss that they have and the leader that they have. So those are our five focus areas. Those have been the same areas that we worked on last year, uh, but we're really gonna focus hard on crime suppression and really trying to work better and smarter and more effectively, um, really, I don't believe in zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. Zero tolerance means I have this net and I cast this wide net and I just have everyone in the net and I may or may not have the right people. Um, when I talk about crime suppression, I'm talking about being very strategic and particular about getting the right people in custody for the right reasons to really impact crime stats in our community. Well, I appreciate that. Talking about patrolling, I, I, one of my favorite patrols is the bike patrol. I love them. And they're great because they go places where person in a car can't go, an officer can't go in a car. Can you talk a little bit about the bike patrol? So, so what, what we're trying to do is for the bike patrol, so we have seven precincts and right. you're aware of that just like you have council districts, but I, but I don't want my folks to be bound by a precinct. If right. there is a problem in district three, why not have Mountain View precinct, Desert Horizon precinct, and maybe Cactus Park precinct all coordinate efforts to resolve an issue in your district and then that same core group of people can go in other places too. So I really don't want them to be geographically bound necessarily. I do want them to be problem driven. And whatever resources we have in the department, I want my folks to be able to use. So we're trying to increase that bike resource, especially in the wash areas that you have. I know you have a number of those areas yes, in District yes. 3. So the, the commanders are working very well together. So those are the people who run the precinct for those folks who don't know that. Um, so we have commanders running the precincts and they can reach out to their peers and get the resources that they need to resolve those issues. And if it means bikes, then so be it. I love the bike patrol. So I was I, a former bike patrol officer. I did Had too. a blast. 
I do too. And they're so visible yeah. in, in the neighborhood. See them. They're very appreciative of the bike patrol. Speaking of commanders, I know we have commanders over precincts, but you have commanders assigned to special areas. Oh, yeah. Can Definitely you mention so. a couple of those maybe? So, um, really great question because people sometimes don't know the organizational structure of the police department. So it's a police chief and executive officer. Um, we have assistant chiefs and then commanders. So we have seven precinct commanders. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a commander over the academy. We have a commander over the SWAT team. We have a commander over um, our lab. We have a commander over centralized booking and records and property. So uh, we have a commander over Homeland De Defense Bureau. So those are the, are the people who, if you kind of think in context, if District 3 was its own city, the commander would be the chief of District 3. Um, so if you think in context of that, but they answer to assistant chiefs who then answer to, to me. Um, what I love about my command staff is every other week we get together and we talk about issues not just in your area, but how can we work together as a team to really make an impact and a difference in our community. And that's really what we're going to be focused on um, this coming year is I really want them to diminish those geographical boundaries and let's resolve some issues and then share that information with the public. Yeah, and you actually have a commander assigned to the council. And, and I have to tell you, I really appreciate that. This past weekend, I had a lot of things going on and I was able to contact the commander and he took care of it. Awesome. And I know my constituents were very appreciative so, of that. So thank you, Commander Connolly, for that. <laughs> um, that so that, that uh, commander, is called the city manager liaison position is, is what it's called. And we realized as a police department years ago how critically important that 24-7, 365 operation of the police department is. And for council people and city managers and offices to really be able to reach out and touch someone in the police department and only have one person to contact. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you will, if you had to pick up the phone and call six different commanders to get something done if traffic isn't flowing the way it's supposed to because the freeway's closed in your area. So Commander Connolly is that great point of contact. Um, and most of the assistant chiefs have, have gone through that. I was a city manager liaison too. <laughs> um, it was a crazy, busy, awesome, amazing experience. And every commander who's been there very much so says the same thing. They learn so much about how the city operates and runs in that position. Yeah, and they're just such a great liaison to us. And again, being a council person, it's a 20 for a seven yes, job as well. And but so. So, so you actually mentioned, so I, and, and I just think in context of my little world, the police world, um, if things go wrong in your district, your constituents are calling you right. no matter what time of day it is if they, if they want answers to questions. Right. So. so thanks so much for being with us thanks today. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this episode of the Stark Report. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions or comments, call my office at 602 262-7441 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district3. We'll see you next time.